guys and welcome to this section of the video which is going to cover the parts you need to make your button box build. Um, this is for you guys that are thinking of building your own um, just to help you out a bit um, and again guys um, you don't necessarily have to use this as a as a guide but it might just help you point you in the right direction. Um, obviously use your own imagination um, for your own builds or configurations or whatever you want to do. But First things first, the important thing is we get the basics underway, um, which is, let me just uh, disconnect that bit of it, actually I'll leave it on, which is this USB controller board, um, it comes with this USB lead as well, um, as you can see it goes into the top board there, sorry the light's not so great and the focus camera's not focusing the way I want it to but it's the best I can work with at the moment um, again I will put the uh, links in the description down below for all the parts you need um, again please just don't necessarily have to use those please feel free to look around online you can find parts on Amazon um, you can find parts on eBay you can find parts on RS you can find parts you know if you could look around you can find parts no you know anywhere but um, I just figured it might help you guys if you want to um, do this for yourselves. Right, so that's the that's the most important bit you need, um, which is the board itself. Now, talking of that board, um, this is a basic board. Um, there is downsides to this board, which you know you're going to have to if you want to wire this up the way I'm wiring it up right now. Um, you're going to have to use more options for joy to key. Now, if I like, I keep going to keep mentioning. If I do get enough interest to build these for other people, um, obviously the baseboard or the base box, I should say, um, will have the basics board in it, um, and will mean you guys are going to have to configure it yourselves on joy to key. Um, so bear that in mind. Uh, but anyway. What else are you going to need? You are going to need, obviously, it's a bit big for this shot, but you're going to need a project box. Um, again, you'll see the link down below on Amazon, but you can get these from eBay, um, you know, quite a few places. I'm going to put that just at the back there, out of the shot. There's, you know, you can get them in different sizes as well, depending on what sort of setup you want to go for. Um, obviously the more switches you want or the bigger switches you use the bigger box you're going to need um, now next aspect is again let me just grab the next bit which uh, cable uh, you can use these these boards this board does actually have um, little connectors like this and uh, you can more or less s slot these onto a, a connector and away you go. Um, but if you want to extend that, obviously you're going to need more cable. So the cable you can use, you don't have to use this. It's just again if you want to um, and you want to make the leads a little bit longer just for ease of use or whatever. Or if you need to wire up your switches in a certain way so um, they uh, act in different ways or whatever. Um, you're going to need some cable. Now it doesn't have to be mega great gauged cable. It, you know, is you know, speaker wire probably will do it. Um, but as long as it's in a small gauge wire or Arduino wire will also work. As long as it can carry at least four amps for it, you should be good to go. Um, what else do you need? Going to need? Obviously, uh, switches. Now. I'm going to go through a few different types. Uh, this one is an on off switch. You can get switches that are momentary. Um, so as you push down, it acts as a momentary press. This one's a locking switch. So yeah, it's on when you push down or off when you turn off. This one's got a little LED and light in it. Um, whoops, put it back up there. Other switches you can get or use will be you can use switches like these toggle switches 
Now, there's a couple different on the market. I'll grab uh, number one, for instance, this one. So, this one, sorry, I'm trying to get it into shot. This one here, this is just what's known as a single pole double throw switch so when you throw it to this side it goes out through here it comes in through here and goes out through there so the feed comes in here and that acts as a common ground on this one or common ground onto that one so when the switch is in this position it grounds out to that and when the switch is in this position it grounds out to that um, and as you then move this switch it breaks the connection and remakes the connection so in a sense you can wire up one single button off of that um, so you can have the blue cable coming in on this middle one and then uh, wire one of these white ones to there and then you're just going to need to use an extra bit of cable like I said just to splice into the other wire so then as you go from one to the other it's all from one to the other sorry it's always going to be the switch should be in on state there and it'll break it and then on again so it's just getting around the momentary aspects you can use these switches as well um, again they come in various different sizes this is more of a simple single throw double pole switch you can get a single throw single pole switches as well um, they just have less poles on them however again this is all or nothing so this is on the on position at the moment if I switch that to off it cuts the connection between these two here and these two here um, and again you there is means and means around it um, but it you know doesn't make or break the connection it's either on or it's off again you can use enjoy the key and I'll go through that when we get to that section of the video and um, make that so it acts like a toggle um, use enjoy to key software now while I'm talking about joy to key obviously this basic board you're gonna need joy to key and if I start making these for other people I've got future plans on two other boards which I wish I found and um, what well, one is called a BDRB board I believe um, it's a 32-bit board, a 32-bit, 32 uh, 32-button board, I should say, um, which then I believe. Now I'm not 100% sure, that the, but it also has software in it, which then means I can program the uh, board to recognise the switches as toggles. So when you doesn't matter which position you have them on, if you turn it off. It act as a, it, a momentary press it again for you so because that's the problem when you turn it off the computer doesn't recognize it as a button push it just recognizes you've released the key um, and that's all it does when you turn it on the buttons constantly on it's like if you're on a keyboard and pressing down on your key constantly you'll get that sticky king syndrome or whatever but on a button push it on a joystick it just recognizes it as constantly on rather than off um, and unfortunately it won't it doesn't interpret it the way I wanted it to with these two boards this BGR BDRB board whatever it's called and um, now I'm I'm going to contact the supplier I'm not 100% sure on how it works now from videos I've seen of it people using it on flight simulator and um, they've used a separate bit of software to get round the toggle aspect of it and I'm not 100% sure with that you're going to need a separate bit of software like joy to key um, to get around that if that is the case then I don't want to throw 20 quid at that board um, and I'm not going to, all I'm going to have is a more fancier board that can carry more buttons on it um, this other board which I've seen is slightly more expensive it comes from the states and it's from a, someone called Derek Spears Designs now looking at that again looking at the website it's configurable um, and it looks more easily configurable than the British made board it comes with its own software um, which then you use and you can assign the buttons in a certain way and um, I'm more or less 100% sure with that one that that one will work in the way I want it to work um, but 
obviously I wanted to see the British made board being the cheaper option obviously I'm in the UK would be a better option for both myself and you guys if I do make it uh, do start making it for other people um, and as I say we'll keep mentioning or planning you know if I get enough interest I will think about doing a Kickstarter option or start putting them on eBay or some sort of site where I can directly sell them to you guys um, but anyway I've waffled on we continue with the other sort of switches which you can use um, for you guys that want to build it for yourself and you don't obviously uh, buy my one um, you know no, there's no gun so you had to do that uh, but other switches you can use are switches like this one this is just a simple push pull switch um, again this is a bit like this single through single pole um, switch so in that position it's off in that position it's on again use enjoy the key you can get round that um, and I'm hoping with this Derek Spears board maybe obviously I can get round that as well or the British board that I've just talked about um, but there's another option this here which is it's a, it's a push pull switch for a guitar um, it does have a potentiometer in it which means you can adjust the volume in it um, but these little again just trying to get the camera to focus is a bit uh, a bit of a nightmare let me just try and get the focus on them no it's not going to really focus okay um, as you can see I hope you guys can see um, there's got a six set of little pins on there now from what I understand uh, it you can either wire it I've got to double check because it's been a while since I've bench tested this um, but I will re bench this test this before I start the next section um, but from what I remember from when I did the bench test these um, you basically why your uh, plus and your minus to these two end ones and again these two end ones and as you throw the switch it, um, it earths out onto that one so then it acts as a momentary button press or put the buttons on as you pull the switch out it breaks and makes the connection again a bit like the pole switch uh, the actual toggle switch and it, and it switches it over to the next side of, of the circuit board. The downside to these um, is if you push too quickly or too well too quickly on that, if you pushed it really quick, it so quick because this is quite a small inside. This has got quite a small throw in it, so it actually throws it between two sets of. Um, connectors inside here um, and it's because it's so small and um, if you do it too quick it's not going to pick it up as being broken it's just going to say oh it's still it's still connected when it wasn't you've moved it but um, you still get those problems um, other switches you can use you don't have to again this is um, an LCD or LED sorry um, light switch again this is just a simple on and off switch um, so you will need to use again joy the key to um, make this work but this has a little LED in it and I might bring this into my box I've got a couple of these as well um, what else are you going to need now the board like I showed you the board earlier they do have these and I've covered those slightly with these connectors and how you can use these you can either um, cut these end bits off and solder and or just slide them onto spade connectors at the back uh, what else you're gonna need we've covered the cable we've covered some of those switches uh, what else you're gonna need you're gonna need some of these as well these are known as rotary encoders um, again like I say links will be in the description but please just you know use them as a guide don't use don't have to use them as a go-to um, but these work as a have a click on and that works as a button push as well but when you turn this 
that acts as a pulse or a button push. Um, so on this side of the board, again trying to get the camera to focus is a bit of a nightmare, sorry guys. Um, on this side of the board, as you twist it, again you're wiring these out in a certain way. As you rotate that bit, it pulses through as a button push. Um, on again, let me just quickly look on that side of the board. That's for the button push side of it. So when you push down, it acts as a button press. Um, you're going to need, well, at least for this build or this specification, you're going to need at least three of them. Um, I bought a pack of 20 because, well, back of 10, I was, sorry, I should say, because it was cheaper than buying three individual ones. Um, what else going to need? Um, this isn't important. It's it's probably a good idea to get this stuff. It's called Hink Shrink. You can get this anywhere. I got this from Maplin, but you can get this from eBay, Amazon, again, anywhere. Um, and you just cut a bit down and heat shrink it over where. If you're planning to go the solder route, you're going to need that. If you don't need, if you're not planning to go the solder route, then you don't need that. It's just going to be the clamps on. What I would say is with the connectors. You might want to change them out if you know electrics, and you want to change them out to um, ones with little plastic boots on them, just so then, just to avoid any chance of it potentially could short out on whatever. And uh, what else you're going to need? Um, right, these are optionals. Um, these little caps. You don't need these caps really. Depending on what you finish, if you don't mind that finish to it, then you don't need these caps. Um, you can go get away with these. Um, you need at least two sort of something similar like this for the guitar switch here. Purely because as you can see on the end of that, you can't really mount. Well, you can use that if you want to use that again. You can, as I've shown you, you can use that. It is a bit. It's not horrible to grab, but it's just a bit, especially if you've got big fingers like me or big thumbs. Um, it's uh, quite difficult to grab. But this literally uses a little, I'll try and show you, there we go, if get the light just right. You can see a little grub screw inside there. And if I spin it round again, try and get this focus. Um, you use that little grub screw just to adjust it. Just make sure it's on there nice and tight. With these again, oops, these use what's this actual end, if you guys are, what are interested, um, that's what's known as a dyer shaft. You can get rotary encoders that don't have this type. This is an old school kind of um, technology. Uh, some of the newer encoders do have more of a traditional kind of like slot on one, which clicks into place. Um, but Again, you've got that option. You don't have to necessarily use those. And um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Yes. Okay. Like for some of you guys that do watch my follow my live streams and stuff, I, was, I mentioned this. This is a key switch. Now I've got two types here. These will both work in in the build. This is the cheaper option. I got this from Amazon for about fiver. Um, however, it's dependent on how much you really want to get immersed into your game. If you're not so bothered, if you do want to have that option, but you're you're not fussed the fact that it's locking, then you're good to go on this. Um, again, it's wireable, so you can have it. So this is an off position. As you can see, the key does come out like that. But this is removable in any stage on this key. Um, but this is what's known as a locking key switch. So as you can see, I'll switch it to the middle position. It's now in the middle position. Uh, again, it's slightly out of shot. But, and um, again, you can still take the key out. If you're not bothered about that, then that's great. Um, again, for the guys, that, you know, for people watching this that want me to build them a box, again, this is going to cover this that aspect of it if you want you don't mind this type of switch um, 
then again it's going to be in the options um, whatever but then there's position number three and again again you can see you can still take the key out number three and that's in the third position so if I quickly show you there back in the third position um, now the problem with this obviously on ATS or games like that even farming simulator um, some games are only recognized two positions so that be on or off or whatever um, in ATS or ATS um, obviously when you turn it to ignition one the, the ignition should if, as long as you've got it configured right um, the ignition will come on but the engine will not start now position three the engine will start um, and on this key switch it's always going to be locked to that position so you can if you're skillful enough get it so it just I did it when I bench tested it so you can just quickly do that and it will start the engine but nine times out of ten I found it just kept on it turn the engine off and turn the or turn the engine on and turn the engine off again so you know you're gonna have to always have it when the engines on in that position when you switch it back off it then unfortunately it doesn't go back to because the ATS is not that advanced ATS or ATS is not that advanced to know that you've just switched that in a real engine or real car when you when you go from engine off um, you switch it off and then it's engine on um, obviously when in a real car you go to start it and then it's on the ignition position um, like I've just may have just already mentioned, mentioned, but in the game, from when I did my bench testing, I'd turn that to that position, bring the ignition on, turn it that position, the engine would be on. Um, but then when I go back to that position, obviously that switch the engine off, and then the engine's off. Now the problem I had when I'd move it back to that position again, it some it would start the engine up, or put the engine in ignition position again. So then you'd be like. Uh, you're constantly having to sort of like adjust the key. That was the only downside of that. Um, if you can live with that, again, it's an option for you guys to build for your own boxes. Or again, I'm going to leave it as an option in the because it's a cheaper option, obviously. Now, this is the way around that. If this is an actual proper um, ignition switch, as you can see, it's got several little terminals on here. It's got battery. Uh, ACC uh, starter and ignition so basically in this position actually that's not in the, wasn't in the right position that's ignition off so key comes out put the key in this kind of reminds me of my old golf as well but so I like this key um, now if I turn it to that's this ignition on as you can see I pull against that but that's not coming out because it's a proper genuine ignition key. This is a bit more money though. This option costs a tenner a time, uh, ten pounds that is. Um, so again, for those guys, again I'm going to say it again and again and again. It's going to drive me nuts. But for people that want it as part of the button box build, if I'm built when I do start, if I do start building these for other people, this is going to be the more expensive option. Um, so bear that in mind. If you want this. Um, it's going to be more expensive. Um, now, its ignition is now on. Now, if I turn the key and let go, see how it springs itself back? And that's going to help out in the game because then I can just do that and it start the engine up and hopefully it will use enjoy the key or these other boards which I've seen, like I said, the Derek Spears design board and the UK board um, the configuration of that would be next bit um, but anyway that's that option uh, what else you're going to need let's just have a look ski again there's lots of options uh, where have I put it I'll put it down somewhere Right, 
Okay, I've just mounted this onto a switch for the time being. But you can get these on their own. I just bought them as part of those LED switch that came with these. But you can get these on their own. Um, again, they're just a missile style. You just got to make sure the ones you order are going to be the same diameter as your, as your switch as you're using. But you can lock it up and just switch it down again. That's an optional thing. You don't have to have that. As you can see, this set of switches I ordered have these type of um, on and off little plates on them and they they have a boot as well, a little plastic boot that come, caps over the top of these um, which is quite cool, gives it a different look um, again I'm going to leave them as optional extras if I do go into making making up boards for people or making up boxes for people I should say um, Right, so what else are you going to need? You're going to need, well, you don't necessarily have to have these. Um, these, again, are optional. Um, and I'll show you what they are. These are the caps. And these are genuine caps from a truck from the United States, so from either Kenworth or Peterbilt. Um, I'll show you what they look like, if I can get the light right. And the focus might, might be a better option, this one. As you can see it's hollow on the inside. There is a thread. I can't get it up right in the light. There's a little thread on the inside here. Um, but these would work on a real truck. Um, they're designed for pneumatic um, air systems. So that's why they're quite a big button or a big cap. Um, I managed to somehow, if you look, these. Now this is more out of uh, luck than judgment. These fit perfectly on them, just like that. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a little screw just to um, hold these in place because I don't want to glue these in because once they're in, they're in forever and I don't want to do that just in case I run into problems and they need to change this cap for any reason. Um, I don't want to do that. Um, but that covers that part of them. These, again, these are optional. Now, if for people that are thinking of ordering, well, wanting to back me or whatever for a, um, and for people that want to build their own box, that, them are not cheap. Um, especially if you're from the UK. If you're in the US then it might work out cheaper for you, but if you're UK like me, um, or European, again, it's going to cost you a lot more. Right, and here I'm going to quickly go over this. It's going to be a bit, a little bit boring, but I'll be as quick as I can. Um, these, I think it was this was three dollars. That was slightly more at six dollars. Um, and you know that you might think, oh, well, that's not all that expensive, Kev. Well, you know, what are you going on about? That's the the cost of the item is, wasn't the problem. I was like pleasantly surprised how cheap they were to get. It was the postage that really um, hammered the price up. The postage for both them cost me twenty pounds. Yes, you heard me. It was actually roughly about twenty-two, probably a bit more than that, twenty-two fifty. Um, so the postage cost more than these did. Now, my brother yesterday um, said to me, he sent me a text saying he's ordered himself a three D printer. Um, and he said, well, if there's anything you want making up, um, let me know. And I said, hmm, I wonder if you can make these up. The only problem is obviously a 3D printer, um, they, this is just a transfer. So I'd have to find someone to make the transfers up with these. But I might, you know, elaborate on the transfer to get rid of the maker's name and then put my name on there instead. Um, so, again, th that would make it slightly cheaper if I can do that um, I, you know producing for you guys um, then that again that would be the next option uh, I'll get my brother to make those switches up and then we're good to go um, but that's gone part this pine in the sky thinking for that at the moment um, but you don't necessarily have to have them they're just more cosmetic make it look nicer look make it look more legit um, I wanted them because it made the box look pretty cool. Um, 
you got some of you guys might be thinking, yeah, well, if you build me in my box, I want them as well. And just to let you know, you can have them, but you're going to have to wait slightly longer, and it's going to cost a lot more in the box. Because it's a base start, I think this was build initially cost me for just the basic parts, it was about 50 quid, and I'm going to be covering that again and again. But that pretty much covers, you know, most of the parts you're going to need. You've got cable. Um, again, you got depending on how many switches you want, is depending on how many switches you need um, and what you need in different aspects of the game um, and how much options you need. This little board, that it says 12, 12 button push, but I'll go back to this board if I can get it back out of that. These down here, these bottom row, they're all for buttons. Up here on this top set, that's just for positioning. So that'd be like um, hat switch up, hat switch right, hat switch left, hat switch down. Um, and that's all you really need to know um, with that actual aspect. Those sets here on the side, they're just for turbo and select and stuff like that. Um, trying them, they didn't want to work as a button push or anything on the board, but you might have better luck. Um, but anyway, I digress. Tools and stuff you can may need or may or may not need. Um, one thing you're definitely going to need at least um, for the if you can plan on using the caps like me, you're going to need at least a precision head screwdriver. Um, half decent if you're planning soldering a half pair decent of wire cutter strippers, or if you've got them separately, a pair of wire cutters and a pair of wire strippers. Um, you can crimp. You don't have to use solder, um, so you would need a pair of crimpers if you're going to plan crimping away, um, and obviously the little crimps itself. Um, good, good uh, helping hand would be a good idea if you've got one, um, which is like little vice-like grip things you can get. Um, but I found some of these. Now these do work out handy, and I bought these from my local. Um, Hardware shop for 50p each, um, and they're quite handy. I'm very, you know, they've, you know, they're quite good for doing your bench testing, which I will cover in the next bit of the videos. How to sort of like set up joy to key and bench test your buttons at the same time, um, but they they are quite handy. And 50p each, you know, you can buy quite a few. Um, that more or less concludes pretty much. Oh well, so oh, sorry. Yeah, you do. If you obviously crimping option. If you're thinking of soldering, obviously you're going to need solder and a soldering iron, and need to be you know semi skilled for soldering. Um, for the bo box itself, um, you're obviously because you can see you're going to need a various size of drill bits. Now I'll cover it more in detail when I show you how to cut out the holes and everything. Um, but one thing I will say, and I've probably said it once or twice before, do not cut out any holes straight away. Plan, plan, plan. Make sure you're, you know, everything's good to go before continuing. Um, I've got a big B in the room. Sorry, there this goes. Okay, cool. Um, but anyway. Um, before cutting any holes, because obviously, plan and make sure you're 100% happy, everything's going to work and where your layout is going to be before cutting any holes. Once you start cutting holes in your box, and you get it wrong, it's going to you're going to be uh, going to need to get yourself a new box, and it's more cost for yourself. Um, so, but hopefully that's probably more covered. I say covered pretty much everything. Um, as I said, just to show you that this one's got the button switch on there and as I said you can uh, put that onto there so as you see it pulls off so that's why I need to put the the uh, screw in it but anyway I'll uh, leave it this bit um, and that concludes the sort of parts you need the next bit will be like the oh, wiring up uh, well doing bench testing and showing you how joy the key works and everything else I'll see you in the next bit.
Hello guys and welcome to the next part of the video which is going to cover the um, how to configure the well how to one test bunch bench test your buttons um, using your joy um, USB joy uh, controller and uh, two um, how to use joy to key um, this is going to be sort of like a multifold aspect to Joy to Key um, and try and cover as much as I can in this at the same time. Um, ultimately, um, if you're building your own button box, uh, it may, might might make better sense to do this while it, you're not done. Why you haven't built the box yet? Do this at the beginning when you can figure. Well, just testing your buttons, like bunch testing buttons or whatever. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can still do it later on in game well so later on once it's assembled it just makes it a bit easier for yourself um if you wanted to configure it right and make sure it's configured right um again the link will be in the description down below for you guys to download um joy to key for yourself to uh, play with um but anyway when you download it you won't have this name here say profile one and these two uh, just be joystick one, joystick two. Now, depending on how many joysticks you have, is dependent on um, what happens next. Say you've only got a steering wheel, you'll be fine. Um, when you plug in the your generic board, this will be fine. It'll recognise it's the second joystick or whatever. Um, best way to find out is just press a button on the item which. Um, you want to f try and configure so if I quickly just show you here if I do that hang on no let's go down because it's towards the bottom here I know it is there it is cool as you can see look when I go to push that button it shows you it's on once you've discovered which um, joystick it is um, just go ahead but if it doesn't appear for some reason if you like I have like I am I've got the G27 steering wheel and I've got the SKR shifter and it doesn't appear for some odd reason you just can't see it appear no matter what buttons you press on your on on your uh, on your joypad or whatever um, it's not appearing. There's a, there's an easy option for that. You can add in extra ones. So there's a load more different things here you can configure. You can configure the the ways that the, uh, the the switches all work and everything. You can have the fields, different fields. As you can see, you can go through them and have a play with if you like. Um, it gives you the um, the POVs as well. You can have it as four or eight, whatever. Um, but anyway, see where it says number of joysticks to configure, max of 32. Um, this is where you change it. It'll say 02, just put 3 in and then refresh. And then you'll see straight away that your it'll pop in and it'll be highlighted. Now, as you can see here, this is permanently on. reason that is is because I've just got the one set of switches permanently, um, well, just attached together. And I'll go into detail why I need uh, I need to do that in a second. Um, and then if you come down to the buttons here, you see none of them is activated. Now, here I'm going to demonstrate two aspects here, two things which are quite handy. A couple of different ways that you can have this. This is like I said to, um, earlier. This switch is a single pole double throw switch now like I said it will work on the other switches as well as you can see I've actually in a sense got this wired up so it acts as just a single throw switch so when I go to throw it in this position now you can see look it's now switched on if I throw the switch away or back up again it switched off and switches back on and this is just an on-off switch. 
this switch here is just an on off switch so you're gonna this is exactly what I was saying, this works as a single ball single throw switch so as I pull it up you see it engages push down disengages okay so but there's a couple of options here if you've got a switch like this you can wire this up in a, any which way you like uh, I'm going to demonstrate that to you um, what you can do is you can if you switch the white which is the what I'd call a ground lead off if you put for one button on this side as you can see put your ground lead in the middle like that and then for your other button if you want to engage two buttons on one switch let me just push it in so it's out of shot just because I can grab it easier as you can see now I've got two different buttons there's two blue wires relate to the feed the white wire relates to the ground and um, that's what I figured out with this board now as you can see it's got the in the box there it's one buttons highlighted if I now I've got to hold the switch again just to switch it because I can't switch it with one hand and hold it the other. There we go. As you can see, I've switched in between the two, and you can have it in that aspect. So you could, in a sense, have two button presses. So when you press, you know, you could have it any which way you like. So with one position it activates one thing, and another position it activates another thing. Um, so you know you've got that option right okay so I'm gonna just uh, make sure I've got the right button highlighted this is where um, you can configure the keys now um, if you've got an old say this this is where joy key works quite well as well uh, because if you've got an older game and you want it only recognizes the keyboard as a controller and you want to use your controller i.e. an Xbox controller or whatever you have um, you can use joy to key um, to start by um, to start um, mapping keys as button pushes say um, you've got an old game where to, in order to jump is space so if I go into the button and rename that as space and then press OK come back out as you can see it says button space you can add a comment there if I double you can either say enter a button assignment or you can double click on it um, you can add a comment just down here you can put a comment down jump if you wanted to um, whatever just you know in it come up with comment just to give you a better idea what what you've already assigned to what and it helps you um, I don't need to do that because I've uh, pretty know what I'm going to do but this works in twofold for that game like that and it works going to work for understand what you need to do to, in order to assign keys so when you uh, want to assign what the key so I'm going to assign this as space again because this in a sense assigns space as the parking brake on or off on ETS okay um, and I think when I go to wire up my next bit which would be the key switch this is where joy to key is going to work out for me um, hopefully right so if I go let's come undone that one I had pre pushed together just need to push it back together again So if I go up, as you can see, that's now highlighted. 
I'm going to change that to number bad plus and then OK. OK, so on this button here of name space, um, I'm going to just make sure that switches back off again so it doesn't interfere with the whole operation. Um, I'm going to go to the keyboard options advanced. Now here you can assign, this gives you several different options. So this it has a switch rotation um, between so many inputs. So it rotate between, so every time you press that button it rotate between one push to the next push. And you can use all of these, so you could say space or shift and space or whatever, um, up, down, left, right, whatever. So every time you press that it do something. So you could in a sense make up um, a cheat code in a sense by just pressing that one button. Um, this gives you more inputs to work with so it gives you three instead of two and this gives you four instead of three and that's switch depending on how many times the button is pressed. Um, so it, you know it, it won't switch until you've pressed that button so many times. Um, that one will switch but depending on how long the button's pressed for. So if you hold the button for a certain amount of time, it then switch. Um, this will execute from input one to input two in sequence, or input one to e sequence, input four in sequence at specified duration. So then you can set the, um, you know, you specify whatever duration you want it for, and it just go through that duration for it. This is where the toggle comes in handy because this is input one when button is pressed and input two when button is so input one when button is released and input two when button is pressed. So and then you've got switch depending on a percentage. So but then that that gives you a third input which then you need to work with. So input one when button is so input one will be space when button is pressed and input two will be plus number pad plus when button is released and then go OK so now as you can see now it says release press space OK and then that relies that corresponds with this up here, which is now numpad plus. Okay, so it's going to, in a sense, just use those toggle between those two buttons, for because for some bizarre reason, ATS will not recognise a zero button press as a, uh, un button as a button press, and it just doesn't toggle between the two. I've tried to make up the toggle for those people who might think, oh yeah, you can toggle it. I only works in this. Sh I only used to work with uh, gear shifting. Um, but anyway, I digress. What I'm going to do, I'll launch um, ATS so you guys can see it working. So bear a second. Let me just pause it here and I'll launch ATS. But before I launch ATS. One thing I didn't for, didn't cover. If I come back into the button box again. Sorry. Um right. Before I launch ATS, I'm going to show you guys how to configure this profile up. You can rename this profile by just clicking on it. Rename it whatever you like or just, you know, just cancel out. Well, you don't have to rename it if you like, I've just named it just so you can, I'll, I can do it here for you, so rename if I bring in the Dropbox you'll see it just there um, it's got previous name, if I just put ATS in ok right, if you want to, you can rename it like that if you go to settings, uh, associate profile with application. Hang on, I'll do that again because I don't know if you guys saw that. So, hang on. If 
we go file you can't see it right because it's at right okay sorry guys I'm just looking at recording here well, I'm hovering above it and I can see it you guys can't right so when you hover above this you'll see a box that comes up with I wonder if I can actually drag this I see there we go that will probably help right see how you see now um see it says well I've got it highlighted there so settings preferences configuration joystick and an associate with applications that's the one you need to click on so I click on that I'll drag that in as well just above it now you can see, already see that the um it said it says ATS there um profile 1 um but I'm going to re um I'm going to delete that And then just to show you guys how to do this, um, if I just move that down, maybe. Hang on. Can I move that one down? I'll move this down a bit just so, so you guys can see a bit better. So I've got two of the same box open, but that's the way this works. Right. Right. So at the bottom here, um sorry not at the bottom. At the top, obviously go to associate path. And if I drag this window back in so you guys can see it. Here it says you've got the profile. I'm gonna delete that. As you can do again delete delete profile okay so I'm going to add a new profile now you can name this whatever you like it probably works out better if you name it the game you want to profile it to just to make it easier for you so I'm going to name ATS again just again for demonstration purposes right here you can see it says application path uh, XCXV file um, file name right and then there's a capture capture application you can either manually type it in if you know where it is if you know where the application is just manually type it in um, but if you don't let me just bring up Steam just to get ready because that's important um, let me just pull that down out of the way right so I'm going to quickly just um, what I do is then you've got if I click on capture here you'll get another box pop up and that's so after three seconds it will yeah, yeah, capture the application it's just giving you a bit of time to launch the application if you need to um, you can have this as long or as short as you like you can have it at zero seconds obviously as soon as you hit it hit start if you want a delay of five seconds you can put a delay of five seconds it's just whatever delay you set that into will be the delay it takes before it captures it so you know it's up to you it's your preference and how long it takes you to, but if I say capture and then launch my see now d just a bit too slow with that Okay, try that again. So, try and capture it. Capture application after three seconds. Like that. Just like that. So, basically, launch your game. Give yourself enough time to launch the game. So, you know, five, six seconds, whatever, ten seconds if you need it. Um, once you've launched the game, uh, then it should come up with this next box, which then says the wherever it's um, located. As long as you see the game name there, you know it's OK. So then OK. Oh, no, not yet. Well, once you know that's good, you now just need to associate that with a profile. So if I now select ATS, 
and then go OK and then press OK. As you can see it says ATS and then there's a profile associated with that. Now if I go into game let me just minim move this box back over again so you guys can see properly. Minimize Steam because you don't need that. Now, obviously, go into your game. What I'll do is I'll just quickly again minimize the boxes a bit more so you guys can see a bit better. Set. Let's minimize this box just a little bit more and minimize this box just a little bit more so you guys can see a bit better. Right. Go into your game options, go into assign keys. Now I'm going to use this to show here on the parking brake side of it. Uh, using this switch here so I'm hoping there we go so look if I now go to assign that key lift that switch up and push that switch back down you see oh okay it's a same number plate plus okay that's not a problem you can do it manually so if you go press space and then press whatever alternate you use so number pad plus as I'm using it now once that is done then come out of those options go to drive now I'm in game here um, Ideally, I don't have the um, brake, the heart brake drive or the Kenny here, but you'll hear it engage and disengage. So now, if I grab the, I'm trying to do this in shot so you guys can see it. If I grab this brake pad here, or brake or the switch here, when I pull up, it engages the switches or engages the brake. And I push down, releases the brakes. Pull up, engage the brakes. Push down, disengage the brakes. Just like a real truck. Um, now, like I was discussing earlier with this one, or the V. The other button, which was or the other switch, which was this um, guitar switch or potentiometer slash push pull switch, that eliminates that aspect. So I won't need to do it on the brakes as such, but I'm just using that as a demonstration for those people that one want to buy it, make the button boxes for themselves and need to know what they need to do. Um, and to just to help the people that wanted to use Joy to Key, i.e., after they've got a box of mine or whatever, or use Joy to Key for their box builds. But anyway, that more or less concludes that part of it and shows you how Joy to Key works and you know everything else. Um, so hopefully in the next section, um, I'm going to show you guys how to sort of like do the planning aspects of everything um, once you've got to the stage where you, or you know where all your switches work and you know what configuration they're all in and everything else um, then the next stage will be um, obviously building your button box uh, or wiring your button box and everything else um, so once you know your switches are good you're good to start soldering or connecting up your wires however you want to go about doing it 
Um, but the next aspect before do, cutting any holes or anything is planning. Um, and I'll go through that um, with you next. So I'll show you that bit of the video. Okay guys, um, this covers the next bit of the video which is um, planning, planning your box. Um, ultimately before cutting any holes or anything it's probably best best to draw out, draw out some sort of plan so you, you've you got um, one it makes it better for you so you can just lay out the buttons on the plan just so then you can sort of think right is that the plan I want um, or do I want to change the buttons round that way you don't inadvertently paint yourself into a corner because if you start cutting holes in your box then then realize that you've made a bit of a mistake and you can't put as many switches in as you thought you could or it looks a bit odd or whatever you might find that you've again you will slip with your drill or when you're cutting the hole and um, you don't get the line holes roughly lined up by eyesight so when you go put the switches in they don't look level so this one will help you look, make it look at least a little bit more level so the switches are more or less in line with each other and it just helps you plan out your box as well if you're not entirely sure which sort of layout you want to go for um, this is one I've made earlier this is from my actual box dimensions I've already done this um, if you guys know exactly what I'm doing, you can skip this set, um, uh, uh, this um, part of the uh, video and move on to the next bit. But this is just cover for the guys that probably wouldn't know. But ideally, you're going to need some graph paper, uh, a pencil. Um, you don't necessarily have to graph paper. If you're good at drawing straight edges, then you're good to go. Um, but if you're not 100% confident with straight edges like I ain't, um, then you might need to use a bit of graph paper like this and obviously a ruler of course. Um, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm not saying this is the size of my box, but I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. So just say the box you're working with is 4 inches or 100 centimetres. Obviously, mark the edge where you want to start, and then go 100 up to the next point here, and then obviously, if your box is say again, this isn't exact science, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, so say the so it's the size you need to measure. Obviously, it's the face where you want to drill the holes on your box. It's not the whole box, just the width and the height, or the width, yeah, the width and the height of your box lid itself, the one that you want to actually drill the holes through. Um, so again, you want to go from say it was 50. So make sure you roughly line up with 50, and then go down to zero. Mark your point on a bit of paper. Just make sure that goes across to that bit. That's why graph paper is probably beneficial. And then, again, because then you can just more or less follow that line over to that line. And then mark it there. Makes your life a lot easier as well, I find. Um, doing some lights a bit poor, sorry guys. Then once you've got, obviously, make up your box. Make sure you've got ready to be good state edge. It's probably gone wrong already. I think it has. Yeah, slightly off. But again, just for demonstration purposes, do that again with each side. So that's the total diameter of your box. Now, what you want to do then is cut in half, in a sense. Um, so, 
we said that was 100, didn't we? So we want to make sure we go at the 50 mil mark, which is roughly there. And same for there. And then draw a straight edge down. Again, it's gone off a bit because of doing brushing it but take your time with it and that's why pencil is probably a better option so you can rub it out if you haven't made a mistake um, do the same again on this side of the box so this was 50 so we need to go make sure we go 25 don't we uh, there we go because that's half of 50 25 so roughly there and I know it goes straight across there okay, it's not exactly straight on the line but just again demonstration purposes and then repeat again just go get between your two half point lines see if this is half of 50 so you need to go 25 again mark it draw your line across do the same this side, draw a line across, and eventually you should have something that looks a bit like that. Um, and he's got like equal segments. Um, now, this where these points cross here, that's you know, you can add them as points. Now, again, this is why this was beneficial because if I put that there, I know that's quite close to that edge and I know because my box tapers down a bit that's probably not a good idea because that's probably not the bit the lid will not shut with this box on it so if I move that up to next bit so I want to put my switch in there ideally because that's going to be a, a goodish place it shouldn't be in the way of anything um, and then you know you can get your rotor encoders and you can place them there um again demonstration purposes you can if you can get the button stand up stand your buttons up there um you can get your to lay your toggles out again at a certain point i know that's going to be quite tight there so again i'm moving down to this next segment just to give it some space um the same again you've got just enough space there to put two together so you can put two, two together like that. Um, again, the brake switches, you can, you know, basically with them, you've got the, I'll use this one as an example. Whoops. You know, they're going to take up a fair amount of space on their own. So looking at that, again, you want to make sure, not so much for the side of the switch, aspect but you want to make sure this doesn't foul the next one because the next one's going to be about roughly the same sort of size as well so when I did my layout I had one here and then one roughly here just enough space so then I didn't have to um, I couldn't inadvertently press another button without by pressing two buttons at once or whatever but that covers it and then once you sort of like got the layout you want then obviously and you're happy with that what you want to do is then where they cross is just put a little tick just across the cross so you know that's where your switch needs to go so when you make your drilling you drill obviously for the cross and you're good to go and that concludes the planning aspect of it and um, once you've obviously marked out where you want your holes roughly next bit will be you stick that plan onto your box and then you're good to go it's not quite lined up but I'll do that offline once you make sure that's literally in line with your actual box um, and it's all lined up correctly stick it to the box either using some sellotape or some clamps or whatever or some whatever you've got to hand um, sellotape is probably the better option uh, or masking tape would probably help as well 
um, just make sure it's good and flat and slick um, laid on the box so then when you go to drill your drills they're going to be more or less in line with each other and you don't have any problems with it looking a bit out of place or whatever but that concludes the planning aspect of this section next part of the video will be um, the drilling the holes um, the wiring and everything else okay so I'll see you in that section of the video hello guys um, just to uh, go through some basic uh, soldering for the uh, button bills box with you guys and um, so obviously if you're a younger viewer and uh, you should not allowed to sort of like use hot items such as soldering irons and you know sharp um, objects like cutting tools and stuff like that it might be better beneficial to get your parent or guardian involved or if you're not if you're an older viewer and you're just not very good with soldering obviously get someone that is good with soldering to give you a hand um, so I'm just going to go through sort of like how to do some tinning and um, so I'll show you how to sort of like do uh, like wire connection etc 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 and I'll show you some of the wires and we'll show you some of the um, the actual switches I'm going to try and wire up um, not all of them just because I was going to make a very long and boring video but um, just to cover what sort of like the basics of soldering and everything and what I'm actually doing in the next step um, so anyway when you get your solder iron, make sure it's nice and uh, hot. Give it a quick clean with your sponge. And then just dollop a bit of solder on it. Again, try and get it in shot for you guys, so you guys can see. Just give it a nice bit of solder on there, both sides if you can. Just let it pull over on the solder night itself. Good to do this in a well ventilated area. I'm lucky enough I'm doing this outside today. But just give it a nice little dollop and then just put it back in your stand. And then it's good to go, it's pre-tinned, ready to ready to go. Anyway, right next bit, I'm going to show you guys how to do a bit of tinning if I can find the wire that I was using, which is just here. Right, so we've got a bit of wire here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, to grab my cable connector uh, strippers. And then what you need to do is obviously get your wire, strip off the, the actual end nice clean end of copper, twist the ends together there we go, so it's nice to be bundled up just like that and then once you've uh, done that if you've got a helping hand then great, if you haven't then you might want to put it in something just to hold it in place while you do the next bit this is where it gets a bit fiddly and having you needing free hands to do this sorry it's not very very well focused as I said I'm outside and the sun's quite bright anyway it's, uh, so if I clean off this solder line again it should be nicely tinned which it is and um, just get a bit more solder Dollop it on the soldering iron itself. Just get a nice big pool of solder if you can. And then put it onto the cable itself. Just rest it on there if you can. Cable get, should get hot soon. So you can hold it hold long enough on there. And then once it sh the cable should be hot, it should start dripping onto the. Let's put a bit more on there just to help it speed up a bit more. 
you can pull just quickly just drop that on there there you go just to help it warm up a bit more better Oops. So it's quite messy, so you want to put a bit of cardboard down just to help things along a bit. That way if you do spill a bit of solder like that, it doesn't matter too much, it's just going on a bit of cardboard rather than on something valuable. There we go, it's beginning to go. Get nicely hot. So um solder flux would be a good idea as well. If you've got solder flux, um just put it on the tin uh, on the um cable itself, it just helps the solder bond on there a bit easier. Let's get a bit more solder on there. Should really clean this iron up a bit. Give it a good clean. the wire up nicely that does there we go it's going on nicely now Put a bit of solder on pull up pull it up a bit as much as you can Ice cream, re cream, we want ice cream. There we go. Nice, let's just get rid of that bulb on the end. And that should pre tin your, your wire. I'll try and get it into focus for you guys. Not easy though. Not this camera. There we go, it's probably a bit better. As you can see it's not too bad. It's got a fair amount of solder on there. There's a few little spots I have missed. But there is a fair amount of solder on there, so that pre-tins that it feels quite good. Looking at it closely again it's quite well covered and that just helps when you go to solder wires onto whatever it just helps everything bond up nicely right uh, let's grab a bit of a spare cable it's got a bit of speaker flex um, show you guys how to uh, make a connection so again, taking the same bit of cable, strip off a fair amount. I'm going to use that there to twist that round. Again, it's done a very nice job there. There we go. Do the same the other side.
then get a bit of your heat shrink don't have to be miles of it, just enough to cover the area you want to solder and obviously just cut a bit down to size Slip your heat shrink onto the, the wire itself. And just move it out of the way of where you're going to be soldering. And get the two ends that you want to solder together and then try and make them into a little hitch if you can. So try and make them into a hitch so just take one end tie it round nicely like that take the other end tie it round and just if you can bond them together didn't work out that one let's try that again Ends. Twist it round. Wait. Take the other end. Do the same thing. Twist it round. Wait. Crimp it together if you can. It should make a fairly nice connection. So then when you tug on it, shouldn't pull apart. If it does start to move, just unravel and redo it again. But that's quite a, quite a solid connection. I don't think they're going to move anywhere. And once the solder is in place, it's going to be quite a good connection there. Yeah, that's not coming off. Right now, put that. Obviously, in your helping hand if you can. Just a bit further out, a little bit further out so I don't run out of space. There we go, that should do it. Solder in the old iron. Nice big dollop of solder, but good. Put the solder on underneath the thing that you want to solder or the wire. Oops. Wire starts to get warm, you can still you should see it's a bit better solder on, let's clean up again. It's starting to go now. Get the wire nice and hot.
windows. So they get nice and hot and out. Let's go along the wire. Making sure it all runs nicely and even into the into the wire itself. There we go. Let's make sure it's nicely cleaned up. Oops. It falls off my clamp. should have a nice again the fog isn't so great I'm trying to put my hand behind it should have a fair amount of good solder on there and that's quite a good strong solid connection I don't think that's going to break any time soon and obviously move your heat shrink from where you had it to over the over where you want it to cover so then you guarantee it won't get any shorts and then obviously get your lighter and then win the veiling and lighter not working or lighter working Once you get the lighter working, just briefly go over the cable with the heat. This is the heat shrink, let the heat shrink shrink down. Sorry, my light is a bit tired and the wind's out here is not great. Light has just given up, but that's started to go, and you can see it's more or less shrunken onto that connection. You can just get your soldering iron and brush over it as well, not as effective as the lighter, though, it does work. I have to get another light and just quickly go over that again, but. As you can see, it's more or less shrunken onto there, and uh, that you do that with uh, pretty much any connection you want to make, and that should be a good solid connection for a while at least, anyway. But anyway, I'm gonna. What I'll do is I'll just do a few wire. Um, show you guys a few uh, me wiring up a few switches, and then uh, I'll move on to the next part of the video, which will be. Uh, Actually, move that away. Actually, um, drilling the holes for the box. So uh, I'm going to go quiet and I'll just start uh, soldering some of these uh, wires and, and switches together.
Right, okay. Um, welcome to the uh, the building of the box part of the video. Um, fortunately, I've got a mission because um, the video I recorded the drilling the holes was a bit sketchy at best. Um, it was either me in a way or it was just out of focus. It was just unusable for the video, so I'm not. I couldn't put that bit in. But basically, what I did is I used a, um, a standard drill to drill out the holes. They're not exactly spot on, but they're not badly out either. Um, the two bolts there, or two nuts, I should say, they I had to glue them in because the rotary encoders um, they're so small they don't go all the way through the the lip of this um, of this top so uh, that's a shame but you know it's best I can do uh, for the time being. They have slightly smoothed about in the glue so it's a case that they're just a bit uneven so I'm going to have to just uh, when I put them in when I put the cap on just make sure there's enough of a clearance to, just to stop that from rubbing or whatever. We're going to need to put a bit of a gap on to the top anyway. But anyway I'm going to leave the rotor and crows as two last. Um, I might not put them on the video, it depends because I just want to be gentle with them because they're quite delicate. Um, I had to set back when I'm soldering the uh, the um, one of the rotary, I had three initially, but one of the rotary encoders uh, broke apart in my hand just after soldering. So, because they're so small and delicate, um, but anyway, I'll, I'm going to start putting some of this together. Um, I'll start off with the the guitar switches I think that's probably the better option let's put one in I'll put the washer on and put the nut on Two of these up tightly in a second, and I'm just going to nap them on for now to get them on. Fortunately, because there's so many different size nuts, I've just decided to use an adjustable rather than just grab all my spanners and because it's just quicker for video purposes. I never hardly use it, but there's one on for now. And down on the deck. Next one. Oh, that was a bit on the tight side, that one. Okay. The washer. I'm just concentrating on trying to find the nut. I am the nut. So 
So basically, something I forgot to say as well, and the bottom of the box here, as you can see, um, I've got the wire going through the side here. I drilled a, um, an 8mm bit through here, 7mm bit um, hole, and then just uh, took these cables off of this little connector here, remembering the sequence of colours, and then put them back together again, um, just to make it a bit more, a bit more professional. And something I may have forgotten to mention as well in the, uh, the when I was talking about the tools and stuff is uh, you will need to use a uh, well you don't necessarily need velcro but I've got some velcro to stick the back bottom of the board on so um, and because the little LED um, push button I was initially going to use was a bit a bit on the uh, small side and because the so I initially kind of thought yeah that's going to just melt as soon as I go anywhere near the solder of that I just went right okay and um, I'll, I'll leave them for now so I'm just going to dig it up these wires because two of these wires have got tangled and I don't want to tangle tug on them because they're only really lightly soldered It's just unclipped itself from the little base, that's alright. Let's clip that back in again, that's cool. Right. right so, is this one next? Oops. Oh. I do this one and then I basically you know what I'm doing I'm bolting these these nuts and washers on I'll uh, pause the video and then show you what it is once I've completed because I don't want it going on too long for you guys to get bored or whatever it doesn't make great entertainment so I bolt this one last one on and then I'll uh, pause it at that but you know exactly what I'm doing. Once I once I get to that point where I've got all the bolts on, I'll sh I'll uh, I'll stop the video um, and I'll plug in the connectors. I'll try and then have it all up and going. Um, but I'll pause it here and I'll see you once I've completed putting the giver. Better signal. Hello and welcome to the final part of the. Uh video here which is the sort of conclusion of the button box and the fill build um, I know I said I was going to show you guys me put connecting it all in and everything else in the last part of the video after uh, sort of putting the button box in and the little buttons on and everything um, but unfortunately these wires that this rotor encoder was on um, well the wires are on that broke off and I <laughs> I is not best pleased uh, to put it light and mildly, um, but I'm gonna have that in mind. After trying these off screen quickly, uh, they don't work the way I'd want them to really work. Not with this board. Now I don't know if they're gonna work well with the uh, Derek Spears design, the Derek Spears design board, and the other board which I've been talking about, which is Brick 32 board or whatever it's called. Um, I'm gonna have to do some digging into that, and because uh, well, some proper research, I'm to say, um, 
email supply and find out what the actual thing's capable of and everything. Um, but that in mind, um, on the bait, uh, on the budget, well, what I'm, we'll call the budget or base uh, models of these boxes. If I do make them, for mass produce, make them for people. Um, these would be just two toggles, just to make life easier for me, um, and make life ultimately easier for you guys as well. Because the only way I figured you could get this to work, these to work in game, with this board, is if you had the cross lay. Um, so if one of them was um, down and the other one was up, and vice versa for the other two, um, just to just to help uh, that aspect of it. But anyway, I digress. I want um, to show you what this thing can do. So here we go. I've got a small job just to pick up. I'm going to show you a bit of ATS and then show it in that, if I can get it to work with a firm bus. It should work with firm bus's USB board, but firm bus is a bit. Eek. But this will definitely work with ATS or ETS because it's the same principle. Um, and it should work with most other games that are re do recognise a uh, a joystick of some sort. And with joy to key, you can get it to work with anything. But anyway, let's uh, fire up the engine. As you can see, I turned it to the uh, on position there. And then it fired it up. And I'll switch it back off again. Just to show you guys. Again. See now it's in the on position. Engine on. I know it's not quite realistic because the minute as you turn the key, the engine's supposed to crank over and then let go um, once it's fully started, but that's the only way I can get it work with Joy to Key. But uh, anyway, let's uh, set off. Back in my good old 521 here. Uh, doesn't have, can't, there's no, can't see the parking brake on this, so try to break a parking brake, so. Can't show you popping in and out. At least I don't think it does. I'll have a quick look. Let's keep a floor in. Pull in. Uh, there's a brake of some sort there, that might be it there. Let's try and pull it and find out. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the parking brake. I guess that's supposed to be the Jimmy Bar, but I won't be known until I connect up to the uh, trailer. Let's um, give it a try. Trailer breaker, just to say. Quite squared. Right, turn lights off and turn the engine off and then attach. It's still a key, key buying key for the time being. Um, I could uh, could assign it to another key on there, but I think I've got this one as my engine brake, this one as my drop axle. Uh, one of two of these are that one there is to initiate uh, cruise control. Uh, I forget what this one does. I've forgotten what I signed that one to. I'm trying to remember now. But anyway, let's uh, fire it up. Right. And let's do a let's do a uh, brake test. So first of all. Let's apply 
both sets of brakes and then let's release that brake oh. try that again again it's a few bit too quick but it doesn't always pick it up um, the only downsides again to say other than the rotor encoder switches is button caps um, I, you know they rotate and I said I was going to try and bring in some sort of like um, washer I might do that to just lock them in place you know, so they move about a bit you know it might not bother some people and another thing is the little wash uh, the nut that I've got them fixed them in it's just not enough it's not doesn't hold it in you've got to kind of grab it from the back otherwise it, you find it it pull off in your hand so I've got a brief work think of another option for that long term uh, but anyway once I know if I can get my hands on a proper set of push pull switches that are uh, two way rather than one way maybe uh, it work in that aspect but we'll see anyway let's uh, do the tug test It's past the trailer tug test. So. Nope. Again, I went to press my button. Okay. That's fine. Release that. There we go. careful on the bumps like this because something I've noticed another bug in this 521 if you go over it too quick even if you go over it slow you still end up with damage on you see doesn't come up as damage but it still acts as damage off you again the new course you do is going to look into that and see if you can fix that over shifting managed it get up here open it up here yeah. Oh, 
a monster. Again, if you switch it too quickly, um, it just uh, it skip that step. Again, it's, yeah, well, it's the best I can work with with this board. I think in combination that. And, uh, so fast that it's not going to pick it up. Flick that switch up. Um, it um, activates the fuel switch, which is quite cool. It's quite blinding for the camera, as you can see. Okay, let's turn the cruise control.
Come on, Mr. No, you're copper, but you don't have to go that slow. Decrease um, the engine brake or jake brake, um, and or one would sort of like take a role when I'm playing multiplayer and um, switch up the channels on a CB so you can scroll up through the channels a bit quick, easier rather than going with the options using the mouse wheel or whatever. But that didn't pan out that well. Say on um, the toggle switch idea with the toggle up, toggle down should be. for the Shifting. Cool. Right. Okay. Let's apply parking brake. And let's apply a trailer brake. And then let's put it in neutral. Make sure it's neutral yet. And turn engine off. Should turn my hazard on really. As I'm on a hard shoulder here. And uh. I'll see you in the firm bus. Okay guys, welcome to the uh, firm bus here. And I'm going to show you the um, button box working in firm bus. It doesn't quite work the same as on ATS. Um, there's a little flaw in the way that this game works. Um, even with joy to key. Um, and it relates to the starter point of it. But uh, most of the other buttons do work, um, and I'll show you uh, how they work. Alright, let's jump in the old coach here. I'm just going to do a little run to, to the, get, uh, to the uh, depot, well, to pick up passengers and stuff. I'm not going to do a full run. I'll show you guys what this, all the switches and stuff do. Um, so, first of all, let's start it up. A 
as you can see, it works sort of. Um, turning it on, turning it off is a bit of an issue though. Um, if I can show you how to turn it, I have to turn it off by turning it on in a sense by doing that, and then to turn the key off like that, and then to start again. I didn't want to go through that cycle at the time. Try it again. There we go. And then I'll show you the door shutting as well. Sometimes if you're a bit too quick with it, it'll uh, it won't grab the uh, or won't recognise the uh, the push. But well, I've got because I've got these as the doors. This here is the brake, the actual proper brake. I've got it set the wrong way, but. Stairs lights, and then pull that one up, and well, downstairs lights, sorry, and then pull up the upstairs lights. So then, all I've got to do, I could potentially um, put that key switch or that switch there to do the reading lights. In fact, I can do that now. Let me do that. This is a, is a toggle, so it's going to be a case of switching it on and switch it back off again. So, controls. If I go into the Skyliner here and then scroll down, interact vehicle, start, stop, engine, indicator up, indicator down, toggle, warning lights, toggle. Fix and brake, zoom, open close doors. It's got an option here that is. Uh toggle air conditioning. Warmer cooler. I could set that to the retard of the up down moment on that, but it probably won't work. Figured it out but it's that one so I can press that one to begin announcement. Uh Shift light up, shift light down, touch control, read and light clearance. See if it let me. Add key. There we go. Cool. And then I can just flick back down again to turn it back off. So let's accept that and then go back in the coach. So the if I look over on the I'll show you if I look what if I flick the actual switches here again. You'll see the lights should turn off. Like that. See like that? that actually works as a proper toggle that's pretty cool there we go I had 
more toggles. I could probably set the whole lot up as toggles, but hey ho, never mind. Uh, what I could do. show you again if I could use this one because I'm out of toggles now actually that's another good idea why don't I controls while I'm at it I might as well because um, if I do it slow enough it'll just toggle the light on step of the window. I don't know why it comes on the wipers come on. Same time. set them to the wipers. Yeah, I've set them to the wipers. Oh dear. Oh, okay, I thought I'd done something like that. Controls. Uh, wipers. Faster. Yeah, I did. I set the them to them. Okay, so let's uh, take the window one back off and leave it as wipers. I think that's probably the better option if it worked that way. And. Do -do 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 -do. Where was it? Delete them. I'm not expecting it to work. It should do, but let's have a look. Might as well log into the Flex phone while I'm at it. If the wipers work, I want them to work. So far, so good. It turns them back off again. Shame. 
so I'll leave them as they were, I think. Alright, anyway, let's just uh, drive the old coach to where we need to get it. So if I. Let's drive to the station and leave it there. Technically, we can use that as a horn if we want to do. Still got that horn. Got cruise control option. A lot of two options I've got available on it. I used to use my uh, starting button on my steering wheel. Purposes, not going to worry about too much about the lights. Break on, and then let's open both front door and the back door. Did that go? No, let me try that again. Now I'll reset it because I threw it quick enough. It's probably as I say, throwing it too quick. Oh, see there. Turn the engine off. I just pressed E rather than C. Still got it set on default. Right. So it needs uh, doors up for the customers. They're going to probably ask me for a destination here, so. Fire the engine back up while I'm here. Come on, engine, start. Oh, because I'm in gear still. Yeah. Cool. Right. Now, zoom through those views. And then do this one there. Conditioning on nice 22.5 degrees. It's been over a bit. Turn all this on, turn the two tone on, turn that converter on. Whatever it does, um, ABS and that one. Don't need the rest of it. And I was just uh, Pretty sure it all turning back off again, so we can turn the lights back off. Oh, a bit too quick that one. Turn on. Got to do it at the right sort of speed, and then turn off the morning light. I'm going to do that. 
I should have turned them off, and oh, I didn't turn them off. So I've got to turn it back on to turn it back off. There we go. Just like that. Cool, but I'll uh, turn the engine off. Right, but I'll leave it there, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like I said, if um, I get enough interest in the button box, um, I will launch a uh, either a Kickstarter campaign or I'll start thinking about putting them on um, eBay. I'll do them as the base, like I said earlier in the video. I'll start as the base um, box will be that it should have instead of these rotary encoders that have two uh, toggle switches um, central locking so a toggle up and toggle down between the two because I figured that probably be with this board with the basic USB board it'd be easier for you to go up and down through this cruise control speed um, so you can have cruise control um, and uh, Everything else on Dobbins, like I said, I will be investing in some slightly better quality um, rotor encoders. If I do discover that the boards I get, the the more expensive boards, um, do work better with rotor encoders and everything else, then, as I said, I'll uh, get some more expensive rotor encoders that are easier for me to solder in. Um, using, well, it won't even be soldering, it'll be using um, Arduino wire. Um, and then it just connects straight to it um, so that would just make life a bit easier for me to do it and uh, ultimately a bit more quicker to manufacture them um, uh, so that would be the baseboard would be, sorry, the base box would be two toggles um, and then the choice of whatever you want switch toggles on the here you can either have them as one ways like this way or two ways like these um, or more center locking switches um, say and uh, obviously with the base one you won't get these caps um, these are you'll just get two black cover actually if I can just remove one show you what they look like well they look like these actually they look like rotary encoders are the same as the rotary encoders works at the same size um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it like I said um, if you did please feel free to like and um, if you know anyone else that may also enjoy watching this button button builds bo bu 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 button box build uh, again guys feel free to share it helps me out a lot and uh, I don't mind you guys sharing and uh, if you're new to my channel and you want to see future episodes well future builds of whatever I'm working on or whatever I'm working on um, please don't forget to subscribe I'll see you in the next one. TTFN.